So my application now can I can configure and save the configuration to the flash memory on the Pico, and that's what I'll just demonstrate in this video today. And I'll go over it first of all on the application itself, showing you how it configures and saves. And I'll go over a block diagram of how it's done and go through the source code finally. So my Pico's back here. Uh, I've just got five volts coming in on the USB connector to power it. I've got a VJ connector connecting the VJ monitor at the front and the USB connector connecting the USB keyboard at the side. When I press Shift F2, it goes into the configuration screen. So when I press Tab, the uh, cursor goes through the items I can configure. And if I press Shift, F, Shift Tab, it goes backwards. So if I change the screen display to an amber display, I'll change the cursor as well. So at the minute it's block cursor. So if I just change that to uh, a flat, uh, an underscore cursor and turn it as flashing on, Shift F1 saves the configuration. And so now it's amber with the flashing cursor. And I'll just, I'll just echo the, the typed key, key presses onto the display at the minute. When uploading a new version of an application, the application typically installs itself at the bottom of memory, of, of the flash memory. This can be changed apparently, where I was reading through the documentation, because the UF2 files, they contain the address where you want to actually load the data that you're uploading. Uh, but from my experience, they, the application always by default seems to load from into the uh, bottom of the flash memory. So when uploading, or when the application writes the data to, to the flash memory, I think it's best to write it at the very top of the memory and then move, then as the data expands, if you want to write more and more data, it comes down towards the application and the application, or as you upload new versions of it, goes up towards data. And this works quite well because when the application is uploaded, it doesn't overwrite the data. So I can do a new version of my application and the configuration data from the previous version still exists. Uh, so I don't have to rewrite it, and it doesn't. I don't have to reconfigure it every time I upload a new version. It just uh, sits there quite nicely uh, and uh, continues operating as it did in the, with the previous version. So there's a few things that need to be taken into account when writing to the Flash, uh, because the app, the application is run from the Flash memory. So the CPU core is getting the program instructions to execute from the Flash memory and you want to write data to the flash memory, there can be a conflict there. So there, there's a few things you need to do. So the CPU core, that's not the core that you're writing to the flash memory with, that needs to be paused because you don't want that to be trying to get instructions from the flash memory whilst you're writing to the flash memory because the CPU core is gonna to fail to get the instructions and it's gonna go crash or something like that. Also, timers with callbacks, because the callback wants to get its instructions from the flash memory and you don't want the timer to interrupt the process of actually writing to flash. So you want to disable timers. And also anything which has an, which has an interrupt which, which triggers, you want to disable those things because the interrupt lookup table by default is usually in the flash memory. And so when an interrupt occurs, you don't want it to go into flash to try and find out what the vector is that it needs to jump to. Uh, so in my case, I've got an interrupt occurring in the PIO because on my VGA driver, at the end of every frame on the vertical refresh sync pulse, it sends an interrupt to my application so my application knows when the when the frame's been rendered. Now my actual application, during the frame refresh, uh, so from between vertical sync signals, it can actually write the config data in that time. So I can technically not have the video screen go blank because when you saw me in the previous bit of video when I saved the configuration you saw the screen go blank for a while because I've disabled the the PIO which is the video driver but I can actually write in that time but I don't want to do that I'd rather play it safe because I well as my application evolves the actual time to write the data may get longer and I may find that suddenly the application is failing because it's interfering with the um the interrupts occurring during the save or just that saves may not always be consistent times. I don't know the hardware well enough. So I may be finding that actually it's saving the data fine right now, but there's a circumstance in, under which the write to the flash memory takes longer and then suddenly I've got a crash. Uh, and I don't want random crashes. So just I'd 
provided you just play it safe. All of these things can be worked around. I mean, you can get the other CPU core to be running programs from RAM, and then it wouldn't interfere with the flash memory. Uh, same with the timer callback, so the callback can be a RAM, and any interrupts that the timer um, actually performs uh, can be in a lookup table, which is in RAM. Now, the, all these are things are probably quite advanced things. Uh, it's not things that I've done or tried to do. I've only got like a month into using the Pico. Uh, but even if I knew how to do those things right now, I probably wouldn't do that because I just play it safe. There's not no point in making something which could fail when I release a new piece of code and not take into account the fact that, I've, that these things need to be done. And then suddenly I've got problems in my application, which I'll need to debug and find out what's causing the problems. So just I, I, in this case, I just play it safe. I'm okay with the screen going disappearing for a couple of seconds uh, whilst I write the configuration to RAM uh, to flash because it's not something that's going to happen very often. I mean, once the configuration is done, I think that's probably going to be the case unless I want to use the terminal on a different um, on a different device apart from my Z80 um, retro computer. So that, that, those are considerations that need to be taken into when writing to the flash. But actually, when you want to read data back, you don't have to go through that because it's just flash memory. Uh, so it's just like reading any other flash memory. You can read directly from the flash memory. You can just uh, go to the address, say, OK, over, I want to overlay this structure over the, the data which is in flash memory. Then I, can write, then I can read back the elements of that structure directly, just like I would any other place in my program. So that makes things nice and easy uh, once data has been written. And there's an, an, a note which is um, very important down the bottom. Uh, because when you upload your application, the data from the previous version of your application is there. If you've changed the structure of, uh, in my case, the configuration data, then the application reading the old data is can hang or is likely to hang because it's going to overlay a structure which um, doesn't align properly with the data and it's going to read back funny data. So you need to have a method of erasing that data which is saved in memory if, if you experience any problems like um, system hangs because the data structure has changed because it's a new version of the code. So on my Pico board, I've got a, um, a mode button, which I use to swap between modes really just for debugging at, at this stage. But if I hold that down while I press the reset button, then what it does is it doesn't load up the configuration data that was last saved. and It just goes to a default configuration and that way I can reconfigure it and save the new configuration and it does, and then that way the data structure changing doesn't matter for my, there's a recovery process. Uh, because, and you need that anyway, even if you're not going to change the structure of the data because uh, saving to the flash memory, it's always possible there could be a, uh, some kind of power fluctuation when you're saving and the data gets corrupted or for some kind of bug in the program, the data gets corrupted. So that you're always going to want a way of getting out of any corrupted data which has been written to the flash and to either have a process where you can on boot up erase the data in the flash and go back to a default configuration or just um, not load the data and ignore it so you can save a new configuration. In my application, in the main loop of my application, I do a check to see if the configuration has been changed. So when someone's actually editing the configuration, it sets this flag so that I know back in the main part of the application um, I need to save the configuration and I reset the configuration save conf config flag first of all so I don't keep doing it. And I call the save config function, which I'll go through in a second. I'll clear the terminal display so it can take effect with the new configuration once it's been changed. Also in the main application, I have a load config function and this is part of the initialization code. So where I set up all the GPIO pins for my application and, and do all the other kind of initializations I have to do at power up. I do this check first of all to see if the mode pin's being held down because if the mode pin's being held down whilst powered up, I don't want to load the config so that because it's probably corrupt or something so I can reconfigure the device. But if the mode pin isn't being held down when it's being powered up, then I call the load config function. This is a file where I have the actual functions where I write to the flash and read from the flash. At the top, you need to include hardware for slash flash.h. 
go to actual functions. So this is the save configuration function which I have. So there's a few considerations which need to be taken. So in, we'll calculate the size of the data you want to save by taking all the structures and doing a size of them for the ones that you want to actually save into, into the flash memory. The first consideration is they need to be in multiples of 256. So a flash page size when it's writing is 256 bytes. So you want to make sure that the quantity of data that you're writing is a multiple of the 256 bytes. And then the second configuration, uh, consideration you need to make is, so I, here I'm assuming I've got a two megabyte flash and I'm saying from the top of the flash, I want to go back the, the actual amount of data size that I have, but then you have to line it with a 4K page size of the flash because the minimum amount you can erase from a flash device is four kilobytes. So anything you erase has to be in multiples of four kilobytes. So you need to page align that with the top of the memory minus your data size with the nearest four kilobyte boundary. Uh, but after you've done that, you've got your two variables, which you can then use. Uh, and then this third one isn't being used in the save data function, but you'll see it being used in the read data function. And this is just the location of the actual data that you've saved in the flash memory. So you can refer to this value to read back your data directly without having to recall any flash functions. So the first thing I do is I allocate a contiguous bit of memory in RAM where I can copy all of my data that I want to save into one contiguous um, piece of memory so I can save it directly to the flash device. And then I copy into the data of the memory which I've allocated the first data structure and the size of the first data structure. And then I copy into the memory that I've allocated plus the offset of the size of the first data structure. So I'm going to place this directly after the, the data I've just copied. I'm going to put my de second data structure with the size of the second data structure. And you keep doing that for however many data structures you want to save. So this is with the, the allocated memory plus the offsets of the sizes of the first two data structure, save the third data structure, size of data structure, and the same again for the fourth one. Then once all the data structures have been con copied into one contiguous bit of memory, I call a function called app suspend. Now all this does is it stops my timer, so it suspends my timer for a while, plus suspends my VGA PIO uh, device for a while. So while I'm doing this right into flash, nothing's gonna interrupt this process and I do in a flash arrays and from the variables which I defined above the offset into the flash and the sector size um, that I want to erase and then I do a flash program again offset into the flash of where I want to save the extra data to the, the pointer to the data I want to save and the data size of the data I want to save. And it's as simple as that. Just call those two functions. They're blocking functions, so they won't return until actually they've actually completed what they're doing. So you, immediately afterwards, you can just resume your interrupts and your PIO, whatever causes interrupts or reads from flash memory, you can just resume those processes. And then I free up the data point to which I had copied all of my config structures into. And that's the, the configuration saved. And this bit down the bottom here, you can ignore this. This is just me then applying some of those configuration changes because this is when someone's configured my device and they've saved the data. So now it's just applying the some of the some of the values which actually the user had configured in my application. And then this is the load config function. And the these settings up at the top here are exactly the same as in the save function. So I'm just calculating the data size, which is going to be data size, which could be exactly the same. The offset into memory, and then this bit, which is what the bit we're going to use in this this particular function, which is the offset into the flash memory of where the data is. And at the very top bit, 
in the data structures I've saved, the very first data structure has this string in it. I've made sure so that when I load stuff, so if it's just a blank, it's a new Pico, I've uploaded my application, there won't be saved data in there. So I've put this string in this first in the first data structure I saved so I can check to see if what I'm reading in flash memory is something which has been saved as, as a configuration. Just a validation check there so that the a, a newly programmed Pico won't just crash because it reads something which is invalid. And then after that, I can read directly out of the flash memory into my structures for the size of the structures. And again, doing the same thing again, but with the offset of the size of a structure the size of the structure but I'm reading directly from flash memory I haven't had to suspend anything I can just do this directly from flash memory back into the data structures where I want to reload the configuration into and again at this bottom last bit it's just me reapplying some of those configuration values in my application once they've been read back from into the structures where they belong